I need to get started on making the z-axis which I've made some huge changes to it because I want to improve on it dramatically. Alright, let's get started. Quite basically, I'm rebuilding the entire base because the lazy Susan used previously just wasn't cut out for it. The new design consists of several wooden rings and the design mimics that of a bearing which makes it very sturdy. Now usually when people glue a ring up they just use a bearing clamp and do it all together but unfortunately I don't have one because I don't usually glue this kind of stuff. So I'm going to try something different and if that doesn't work I'll just go to a backup plan. So basically I'm going to try and spread some wood glue all over the joint, both of them. And then top and bottom, top and bottom of the joint I'll put a little bit of super glue. Now I'll hold them together. That for a little bit until the super glue sets, and I'll do the next two. Using a similar method, I made another ring. Trying to draw a circle around the taller ring was probably the hardest as I had to prop the compass up which meant I had to keep the compass steady and also the ring steady as well. Now just trimming the rings to width. So this ring is supposed to fit underneath this top base and so to make sure that the profile, the outer profile of the ring matches exactly with the with this piece, I am going to screw this down and then use some router bits to like trace around it. So a top and bottom flush trim bit should do the trick. Apart from a bit of nasty tear at the end, all the rest looks pretty good. Uh, next is the inside and I've got something pretty creative for it. Well hopefully the router bit doesn't come flying or breaking and I don't accidentally die from it. Honestly this was quite a dangerous method. If you accidentally turn the ring the wrong way, it can go spinning and flying and breaking. This also took a while to cut and it would have been so much quicker to just open it up and cut it with the bandsaw. Otherwise, it does produce a very consistent wall thickness which unfortunately wasn't that important to the structure. The ring looks kind of flimsy after trimming it to such a narrow wall thickness. So here I am adding some splines to the ring. And then once the glue is dried, just cleaning up with the belt sander and the router. Now for the other ring I don't actually need to make the inside round as well, I just need it to kind of just support stuff to add extra height to the assembly. And so I'm just going to sand it round from the outside and cut it to uh, height. <laughs> oh my god, oh no, one is hanging off my arm. Oh shit. Oh shit, it's coming. Oh shit! <sighs> so this part is kind of like a middle disc where half the bearings are mounted on it and the other half of the bearings right against it. Yes, if only my drill press could just have a bit more range. To ensure that the holes of the upper bearings line up with the track for the lower bearings, I am using the router which has been set to cut the track to drill the holes for the upper bearing. Now for the top, I've already drilled out the center so I've made a little plug and just adapts into it. And so that will allow me to recenter it. Uh, 
Alright, so the whole assembly kind of goes together like this and the outer casing with that and then the bearings provide support Now this is actually upside down so the robotic arm is supposed to be like this and everything mounts on top of this plywood here Now since I use these roller bearings, they have a thread rod at the end and so I can actually adjust their height until it has no play um, horizontally at all However, due to the nature of these bearings and also the nature that uh, I'm using them, which is using them inside the groove, they still can have sidewards play this way. So, is that vertical? I have no idea. But this way, yes, naturally, or whatever the heck. <laughs> and so to overcome that, I am going to use these bearings and then I'm going to mount them on the side. Now, these are actually parts from the sliding table saw project and they're actually cams and they have the center offset from the hole at the back and so that you can actually adjust, adjust it when you mount the bearing on. Now I already have two of these, these two are actually left over from the sliding table saw project because they fit a little bit too loose and so I just uh, eliminated them but they can be fixed and I have a block just enough for two more and I have just two more bearings so it just works out which is very nice so I'll just make them into more of these cams. To fix one of these so that it actually fits on tightly, instead of right now it's just sliding fit. Um, it's pretty simple actually, and rather violent. <laughs> I know it has worked for me, I don't, I'm pretty sure there are other more elegant methods, but this is what has worked. Just bash it in. <laughs> and then that should have expanded the metal a bit, and then now it's nice and tight. Yep, and nice tight fit. Done. <laughs> in order for the bearings to work, it actually needs to go inside this piece of wood. So like this, and then inside here. And for that to happen, I'm going to have to mill a spot here. And to do that, I'm going to use a template on the paint router. So I've got all four of the slots milled out, but we've got a slight problem in terms of trying to fit it in. Um, the hex nut that's holding the bearing on actually protrudes past the bearing, and because it is quite small here, I am probably going to need that extra bit of distance for the bearing to actually fit on there. So I'm going to grind that tip off. Let's play. Hooray, now there's pretty much no play at all. <laughs> it's really nice. <laughs> Next is the bearings that go underneath and rise in this track. And the way I'm going to mount it is with a piece of steel like that and then drill it through like so. Now the roller bearings don't actually have threads that go all the way and that means that if I try to mount it flush with the metal like that with the bottom pressing against it uh, it won't actually have any threads that's contacting with the metal and so I won't be able to screw it in or out so that's why I need to make some spaces to like make the metal taller and so that it is screwing into some threads Drilling through metal is surprisingly so much more satisfying than drilling through wood Maybe I'm a metal worker after all
needed me to what? Am I off by so much? What? So I guess Murphy strikes again. And my initial method for marking out the holes wasn't that brilliant after all. Uh, somehow there's been a systematic error, so all of the holes are about two or three mil off. So I'm going to have to re-drill them. Luckily the metal plate doesn't mind to have a couple more holes on it, so that's fine. Ah, that's a much better fit. Nice. Now I have to drill a huge hole in the center of the middle disc so that I can put a drive shaft through it. Here I am starting to make the drive shaft, which is just turned from wood. Here I am turning a tenon on the end of the drive shaft to key into the worm gear and modifying the worm gear respectively to accept that tenon. And so the transmission shaft fits through the hole like this. And then I'm going to mount this steel plate onto the gear so that I can actually put the bearing on. And to do that, we're going to have to take a few operations with this before screwing on. They look like proteins, like Alpha Helix. <laughs> now the hole in the middle is actually supposed to be about 16 millimeters, but the largest drill bit that I have on hand for metal is only half an inch. So yeah, kind of wish it was wood, to be honest. <laughs> I kind of screwed up the holes a little bit. For some reason, I assumed that these were M5s and so I drilled a 5mm hole, whereas they're actually M4. So the holes are a little bit too big, at least two of them, until I realized on the third one. So at least one of them is going to be tight. But that shouldn't be too much of a problem since they're countersink screws. And so I'm going to countersink them and then the countersink should help lock them into place. Now to mark out the hole locations on the gear, I am going to put a bit of super glue at the back to temporarily just hold it in place while I use the tail stock of the lathe to center it onto the gear. And now I'll let the super glue set so they will hold it in place so that I can actually use a drill bit to mark it out. I'm doing this because I don't have a welder. So <laughs> that's why we have to go through all this trouble. Eventually I did end up buying a 16mm hole saw for the hole. That is definitely a very weird hole pattern. Looks like almost like a thread. <laughs> now turning the metal plate to fit the bearing. Only 2.00 so it should fit after I put it in the freezer. For the other hole that encases the bearing, I do have a foursome bit that says it can drill the perfect hole, but in actuality, it actually does it a bit oversized, so I have to use a smaller drill bit and use a lathe to fine tune the hole. Once I was happy, I could press in the bearings. Now I can modify the worm shaft as well. So the shaft is actually meant to fit on the drill, like this. The uh, thread was actually quite special and uh, it's a 3.8UWF, something like that. I don't know, it's just not very common to me. And so I had to spend like 15 bucks to buy a tap for it. It's so expensive. Now I'm shaming the end of the worm shaft to fit a bearing. <sighs> yeah. Pretty sure that's gonna fit. So the worm gear is rubbing against the uh, wooden base a little bit, so I'm going to chisel that area out. Yeah, so now that works nicely without rubbing against the wood. 
So now to secure the bag. That's the hardest hole ever. Uh, it shouldn't matter. If it's too loose, I'll put a set screw in it. And that fits. No, let's just look at it. Move. In order to center the transmission shaft onto the top plate, I've made this adapter that fits into this hole and also the hole in the transmission shaft. And now I can flip it over and just drill out the hole. Um, I'm just going to eyeball this. I am just reusing the old base. So this goes roughly like so, but the shaft is in the way. So I actually need to trim away this bit of wood. To mount the drill on I'm using band clamps and so I'm making some slots on the base in order to fit the band clamps on. Now as you may be able to see the worm gear shaft is slightly tilted so I'm going to insert a shim below the motor and so the shaft will be more straight. I realised that I probably should put a set screw into here to lock down the shafts so that they don't turn because right now if I turn anti-clockwise it will still unturn itself from the shaft and also I should cut the handle out so the wires are actually exposed and just to make it look smaller. Now the Z axis is pretty much done, so I can actually finally start putting the robotic arm back together. Oh yes, I have to enlarge that hole, and it's still 12mm. So this is just a piece of wood with a 12mm through hole and a 6mm partial hole, and this is so to just help me draw it out. I tried putting set screws onto the shafts of the universal bearings, so to lock it down, However, that wasn't really effective because the middle disc was made out of solid wood and the end grain just couldn't hold a thread. Alright, first test with the z-axis and the worm gear technically it should work theoretically <laughs> practically there's a murphy here so the drill should be powered and so if I put a trigger oh look at this it actually works Oof, something actually works for once holy crap that's amazing in my shop. Now, other way. That's amazing. We did it, guys. <laughs> Holy shit. Alright, now the rest. 